Hey guys, how's it going? Culprit here, and DICE has done it again. Uh, just a night, I had some time, I thought I might get some gaming in, play some Payday, grind a little, get some items, uh, and they go ahead and info dump us again, which, you know, no complaints, it's a great thing, and, and, and I was on Twitter today talking to some of the guys saying how uh, happy I am with how DICE has approached this Battlefield 4 unveiling and beta and that whatnot. What they've been very forthcoming with information, very forward with it, um, very transparent in that regard, and they, they've, they've done a good job of consistently putting information out, and... Uh, They've recently started up a blog. I spoke about it with that Shroud the Building in Darkness video I did a couple days ago. Uh, it's blogs.battlefield.com. You can go check it out. There'll be a link in the description and an overlay, but in case you can't see it uh, on mobile whatnot. Uh, they are basically uh, kind of talking about different topics. They're bringing developers in. I believe they did this for Battlefield 3. They certainly did it once Battlefield 3 was released for some kind of the, the dev cycle. And today they're talking about, they talked about, they, they showed some of the, you know, player models, which I'm going to do a video on that as well. They talked about new suppression, which actually I'm very quite, I'm quite excited about. I'm going to do a video about that as well. And they talked about the field upgrades and, you know, very interesting. They had a lot of information in a little blog. Usually blogs are fluff. There's not really much actual stuff, to, you know, meat to kind of sink your teeth into. This one had a lot. And I found it very interesting. And I wanted to share it with you guys and talk about some things because I'm sure a lot of you guys are like me and had some questions. So they answered quite a few in this box. So today, let's talk about some field upgrades. And I'm going to quickly get into how they go about it. How do they work? And basically, uh, the field upgrades, and for you guys who don't know, you see the image on your screen right now, is that little thing. They're, it's replacing squad perks. You don't choose those anymore. They're not individual. They're this tra uh, this kind of evolution. Well, I guess I'm stealing their, their vernacular now. But it's you start off, and as you gain squad points, you, you move across the bars you see in front of you. And it's, you know, you, you gain more unlocks or squad perks through your achievements, through, you know, accomplishing objectives. Now, each, as a squad, you work towards these. As a five-man squad, you, if, you're, if your teammate, your squad mate gets points, that goes to your, you know, squad pool, and you all move across at the same rate. Now, if your squad gets wiped, you lose some of that progression. I haven't really said how much. It's not completely wiped, but you lose some. You, you take a setback, which I think is fair. Um, each individual in the squad can pick their own career. That's what they're calling this, this little bar of uh, the, the set progressions. Uh, they're calling it careers, and you pick your own. And that's based on what class you play, what style you play. And this, these are the type of the things we've known. So what they've gone on is they flesh it out a little more. And they've explained to us that there's two global sets of careers that anybody can pick no matter what class you're playing. These are global, and they are basically the offensive and defensive. And basically, to, to break it down, the offensive career, the offensive set is, you start out with sprint, as you see here, you go to ammo, and then you go to grenades, and as you, the last one there is a little, you know, we don't really know that one that well. That is a decreased fall damage, which I think is kind of interesting. I'll speak to that in a minute. The other global that I mentioned is the defensive, and that you start with armor. I'm gonna talk about that later as well. Cover, which we know from uh, Battlefield 3. Flak, we know. And quick regen, which basically means the regeneration uh, will start quicker once you exit combat. You know, once you are, if you're in combat, your your character does not regenerate health. It, there is a set of you know 30 seconds, say, from you must be out of combat for your health to start regenerating. This would be you know quicker regeneration. So that timer would be shorter. You only have to be out of combat, say, 15 seconds. So you get the idea. Those are the globals. Anybody can use them using any class. Uh, think of all kit weapons, basically the same idea. Now. Uh, like I said, I look at these and I'm kind of confused. I think it's kind of odd that the fourth perk in the offensive career is one that I wouldn't particularly think is good. Now, what does that say? Maybe it's not very good perk. Uh, you know, we, we know that Battlefield 3 hits them not very good perks. Or maybe the map design in Battlefield 4 is going to make it such that decreased fall damage is a very good thing. Who knows? I'm two months before the game, never played. I'm saying I don't think that's a perk. It's weird that the ultimate perk in that line is going to be one that I don't value very highly. But who knows? Two months after launch, maybe I'm going, you know what? That's a really important perk. Every squad should have it. So we'll see. But it's kind of interesting. It kind of does point some ideas towards how maybe they're designing their maps. Maybe there are going to be a lot of different heights, elevations, levels that you're going to be jumping off of. And, and that, that freedom to do so could be pretty crucial. Only time will tell on that. Um, I personally, which is kind of odd here, as a rusher, as an attacker, as a guy that's always applying pressure, uh, I think I'd probably actually prefer the defensive career, you know, field upgrade set. You know, increased armor, that basically it decreases damage taken to the chest. Cover, we all know that's very good, it reduces suppression. Flak, 
you know, you, you don't take as much damage from grenades and explosives and quick regen. Well, if I'm in the in the heat <laughs> and I'm rushing buildings and clearing buildings, I want to be able to be a little less susceptible to, you know, explosives, grenades. I want to have, you know, less susceptible to uh, suppression, uh, more body armor. Yeah, thank you. And, and be able to regenerate my health quicker. That would be great. I mean, I could definitely see myself using this defensive career in an offensive manner. So, uh, you know, labels don't exactly imply exactly what they're only used for. Um, beyond that now, each class is going to have their own specific career, which again, I'm using that word, that's their word, just, you know, career is just this bar you're seeing in front of you. Um, basically, to explain it, um, the assault class is going to have a combat medic set, and it's also going to have a grenadier set. So basically what you're seeing here is once you pick your assault class, now you have a decision to make beyond that. Do I want to go the medic route, medic bags, first aid kits, the classic assault guy that we know that predominantly we see you would go combat medic. They don't really say what those are, but uh, as you'll see later, I'll show you the list of perks so you can kind of get an idea. Or do you want to go to the Grenadier route, which would be like the Underbarrel, the 320, these types of things, and you want to enhance those skills of the Assault class. So you're picking, first you're picking the core class, 104, Assault, Support, uh, Engineer, and Recon. From there now, you have to make a decision on how you want to play that class. So it, it's a way to kind of increase the classes a little bit. You know, we still have the four core classes, but there's variation within those classes, so you almost end up slightly like eight classes. I know I'm taking a reach there, but you get the idea. Uh, the engineer kit, to give you another illustration that they, that they told us about, you have a then choice of the mechanical or mechanic set, or you have anti-armor, anti-tank set. So again, you get the idea of the balance there. You choose engineer. Now, is this engineer going to be more repairing our own vehicles? Or is he going to be an, an offensive threat to our enemy's vehicle? So you see the trade-off there. You see the you know the tree branching off. Um, they didn't list the support or recon careers in the blog, and I haven't really seen them listed yet. Correct me if I'm wrong in the in the comments. I'd love to hear them. Um, like I said, this is just a way. It seems to add more variety in the four core classes. I welcome that. I think it's a good idea. Um, looking at the list now, I'm going to segue over. This is the list that they, they published, and these are all the up field upgrades. Um, some upgrades, just real quick, that caught my eye, the C4 Claymores upgrade. This increases the max inventory of C4 and Claymores. Uh, I think I don't have to explain this to you guys how that's a little concerning. Get some tarred out there with more C4 and more Claymores. Could kind of you know slow down play and make things not so enjoyable. Defib upgrade um, increases charge up speed of defibrillators. Now I'll read between the lines. Again, remember, I don't have any hands-on experience with the game. And, but this tells us that the defibrillators are going to have a cooldown, or I, I should say a charge up. You can't just pull the defibs and revive somebody. You're going to have to pull the defibs, they're going to have to charge for some set amount of time, and then you can revive someone. This is something I've talked about in videos before, I think that's a good thing. Again, we're reading between the lines here. We're reading about field upgrades, but we're gathering what they're gonna, how they're going to do defibs. Um, that's pretty good. I like that. It sounds good to me. I don't like these, you know, pull out the defibs, fly by. You shouldn't be able to revive a human, restore a person to life in the blink of an eye. It should be a set motion. Take some time. You have to have a secure area to do so. I'm okay with that. Um, advanced spot increases the time targets are spotted. That's pretty interesting. I mean, spotting works a little differently now as we've seen. So that sounds pretty interesting. Um, med kits upgrade and, you know, resupply upgrade. These uh, increase the max deployed medic bags and packs. It's the same, same perk for uh, support as well. This makes me believe that I can have more than one medic bag down, which is kind of interesting. It sounds like you can be super medic. You can have two, at least two medic bags down and covering two maybe power positions so your teammates can all get healed off of those. And you can be slapping first aid kits on people too. So that's interesting how that is. That would be where you, I would assume, you would kind of pick the combat medic of the assault class. And you're like, Mr. Super Medic, keep everybody alive. Nobody dies on my watch. So that's kind of interesting. Motion sensors grenade. This increases the inventory of motion sensors in, on your person, and it also increases the range of tugs and the map, which I think is pretty interesting. These are two tools that are quite powerful. They're just kind of underused in Battlefield 3, so if you're increasing the range and the ability to carry more, so now maybe, as I'm theorizing here, I can carry two tugs and kind of deploy them around maybe in a defensive manner. That could be a very, very powerful tool. Uh, you know, combine that with the commander mode, I mean, you could really have a pretty good you know, grip on the intel of what's going on around you, that's for sure. And then medical supply unit. This is more for vehicles. I, I imagine it's got to be an engineer type thing. Uh, occupied vehicles will slowly heal resupply nearby soldiers. So that tank, that Hummer, they, I don't know, no, they don't have Hummer, but I don't know the name of the truck off the top of my head. Um, if you are, I'm assuming, an engineer with one of these perks and you're in that vehicle, and then that vehicle pulls up to a group of soldiers, if you have, let's say, the medical uh, supply unit perk, well, guess what? You're going to recharge these, the health on these other soldiers that are gathered around your vehicle. This is kind of back to Battlefield 2. They had this. This is kind of neat. This could change things kind of dramatically as far as support vehicles go and things like that. Um, be very interesting to see how that pans out. 
Um, my biggest concern, as we're looking here, is the armor upgrade perk. Uh, it reduces the incoming damage to the chest. Now, I mean, I don't think, again, I have to explain to you my concerns here. I don't like these types of perks. Uh, we had Magnum Armor in, uh, Magnum Armor, Magnum Ammo in Bad Company 2, where if you did not have that, you were at a severe handicap to everybody around you that did. You know, think stopping power in Call of Duty. Uh, I don't like these. I like every bullet to be the same or every life to be the same. Um, is this going to be like stopping power in Magnum Rounds where you have to have it or you're just, you, you're kind of at a, you know, handicap, like I said. So, big concerns here. Secondly, is this noticeable to the eye? Do I see someone running? And can I, can I register that while wow, he's got body armor on, it's going to take an extra bullet or two? Because everybody knows, like, you're in a gunfight. You know, you got hundreds of hours on a gun. You got in the game. You know exactly how many bullets and uh, you know how many times you have to pull the trigger are going to take someone down. And you know when you get that faulty hit registration where, you, you know, a bullet looks like it hits, but it doesn't register. And you run around the corner and next thing you know, you left the guy alive because you thought your bullet hit. It didn't. It, it's very frustrating. Well, think about that now. This guy has super life and I pound four bullets into his chest and I move on to maybe his buddy who's now starting to aim down sights at me. But I didn't kill the first guy because he's got body armor. There has to be a visual cue to tell me that that's the case so I know to put him down with an extra bullet or two. So that's a concern for me. Like everything, I, I've said this in just about every video I've talked about Battlefield 4. It's all about implementation. It's all about the balance. That is up to dice. They have a dodgy record with that for sure. Um, but I like that they're being transparent and putting that out there. They're obviously listening to feedback at this point. I think that's pretty clear as we talk about suppression in the other video, things like that. We're definitely seeing elements of what forums have talked about and YouTubers and things like that. So they're not blind to it. So I think if as people talk about these things, they will be listening. And they've done a good job of balancing when they've done it. The problem is it took them too long to balance a lot of things. So hopefully that'll change Battlefield 4. What do you guys think? This is pretty uh, big indicator on how Battlefield 4 is going to play. This is going to affect every minute you're in a match. So this is pretty big information. What do you guys think? Tell me in the comments. Once again, guys, thanks so much for listening. If you're new around here, don't be shy to hit that subscribe button. I'd love to have you around. Once again, guys, thanks for watching. Take care.